but but this this is a good one because we're solving by substitution and we want to plug this in for y in the other equation probably because that variable is already isolated. So we'll take that and plug that in for y. Good. So we got negative 4x plus 2 times 2x minus 5 is equal to negative 10. And so we have negative 4x and then multiply that in and you get plus 4x minus 10 equals negative 10. But just keep going and add like terms. What is negative 4x plus 4x? Yeah, 0x. And what is 0x? I don't know. Okay, what is 0 apples? 0 bananas, 0 pears, 0 dollars. What's that? There Zero. It's nothing. Right? How about zero people? What's that? No people. Zero trees? Zero. Zero x is just zero. It's gone. Exactly. We put them all down. They're gone. All gone. So negative 10 equals negative 10 is what you have. You have a number on both sides. The letters have disappeared and we don't know what to do. What is x and y equal to? So that's our problem here. Like, what's x equal to? I don't know. What's y equal to? I don't know. And that's the answer. We don't know. Um, but 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 the math is that this is called what they call an identity. And so that implies there are infinite solutions. Weird, huh? Let me explain. You're supposed to know to just, once you've got an identity, you just say infinite solutions and, and that's the answer. But we are all going to solve by graphing and on your test I'm going to all have you graph anyway. What I want you all to do is solve this one for y. What happens when I solve for y? Negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 10. Solve that for y because I want you all to understand what the heck is going on here rather than just memorize that, oh, it's an identity, infinite solutions. But if I solve that for y, what do I do? Add 4x, right? Good. And I want you to write 2y equals, you can do negative 10 plus 4x, but I prefer if you did 4x minus 10, because it's just more standard to put the x on the left and the number on the right. It doesn't matter, by the way. It doesn't matter at all. Um, now, to get y in its own, we need to do what? Yeah, and we need to divide everything by 2. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's y equals 2x minus 5. See that? Yes. Huh, interesting. Why is that interesting? This was the first equation. This was the second equation. What can you say about the first and second equation? It's the same. Yeah, the equations are the same. So if we were to graph them, how many points of intersection would we get? And you know from your graphing experience that they would, like, the y-intercept would be negative 5, right? And it'd go, like, over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, something like that. I'm not going to do this perfectly, but, but your graph would look something like this. y equals 2x minus 5. And so we'll call this the red graph, this first equation. And we'll call the second equation, the purple equation, y equals, sorry, y equals 2x minus 5, right? And what would that look like if I was to graph y equals 2x minus 5 in purple, right? Well, it'd be the exact same graph on top of it, wouldn't it? So how many points of intersection do we have? Two. Two. Well, there's one here, 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 there's one here. And they go on, they also go on forever, and there's decimal points of intersection as well. Right? Everything in between, and it goes on forever. So how many times do, how many, if you have a red line, and you put a purple line on top of it, how many places do the two lines touch? Infinite. Right? Infinite points of intersection, yeah. Infinite points of 
intersection. So infinite solutions. Ah. Okay. So that's the answer, infinite solutions. If you're doing a test, I would definitely recommend that y'all just graph the lines just to be sure that you got it right, rather than trying to memorize, oh, when it's an identity, it's infinite solutions. When it's a contradiction, no solution. Because that's the other thing. If you guys are doing this and you got something like negative 10 equals, you know, positive 4, then that would imply that's a contradiction. And I guess you're supposed to memorize this for some reason which means there is no solution. So I, I don't see the value educationally in actually memorizing these things. I don't know what you're getting out of that. I do see the value in this, the concept that, that two exact same lines, they're going to intersect different places. By the way, with the contradiction, if you got an equation like that, there would be like, you know, parallel lines that never meet, right? And we'll see that uh, in the next example anyway.